Read my lips. You are not the judge. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And today I want to talk to you about the parable of the prodigal son. Now you can find this parable in the book of Luke chapter 15. And for the last few weeks, I've been talking about Luke chapter 15 and the three parables that you'll find there. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the prodigal son. Now a parable is just a story with a purpose. And Jesus told a lot of parables. And these three parables are all talking about, you know, people that we look down on. And it's talking about repentance. And there's so much that we can learn from these parables. You know, just like just like the whole Bible, just like every word of Christ, there's so, so much that we can learn. But I think one of the things that is important, one of the things that we can learn from these parables is the importance of viewing ourselves and others the right way. Viewing ourselves and others the way God views us. And the parable of the prodigal son does a great job of showing us how we ought to view ourselves and others. And I think it's a great example of what repentance should look like. Now, okay, the word prodigal, it means like wasteful. So the prodigal son means like the wasteful son. And repentance, or like to repent, means to stop doing the bad thing you're doing and start doing what you ought to be doing, or to like change your mind and, and go back to God. That's what it means to repent. So in the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus said that, that there was a man who had two sons. And the younger son went to the father and he said, Father, I want you to give me my share of the inheritance. So basically he was saying, you know, when you die, you're, you're planning on giving me some money. Well, I want you to give me what you were going to give me after you're dead now. I want it now. Basically, I wish you were dead. Give me your stuff. And, and so the father, he divided up his stuff and he gave his younger son his inheritance. And that younger son, he went, he took that inheritance and he went to a faraway land and he squandered it. He wasted it. He, he spent all his money on, on wild living, on, on stuff that he shouldn't have spent his money on at all, let alone all of it. He wasted everything he was given. And then there, there was a famine in, in all the land and, and he was in need. He had nothing. He was starving. And so he went to go work for someone who lived in this faraway land and uh, he got a job feeding the pigs. Now, pigs are stinky and they're smelly and, you know, they roll in the mud and stuff. They, they, they're, they're messy and gross. Like, I, th I think that we can all identify that feeding the pigs might not necessarily be that fun of a job. But for the Israelites, the people that Jesus was, was talking to, the people that, that were, you know, sort of judging Jesus for being kind to sinners, talking to them and, and spending time with them, eating with them and teaching them. Well, for the Israelites... Pigs were not just like dirty and messy, but God said, don't touch pigs, don't eat pigs, leave them alone. They're unclean. So for this son, this wasteful prodigal son, not only had he, you know, sinned all the way up to this point, but even feeding the pigs was a sin. And he was so, so poor now, you know, he had spent everything. He was so hungry that he, he even wanted to eat what the pigs were eating. And that's just ugh, gross. And finally, you know, he like, he came to his senses and he's like, He's like, how many of my father's hired hands have food, right? All of them. And yet here I am starving to death. He said, I'm, okay, I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to tell him I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but please make me like one of your hired hands. Like make me like one of your servants. And so he decided he was going to go back to his father. And when he was going back, while he was still a far way off, his father saw him. And he was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he went and he gave him a big hug. And I, I don't know about you, but that's not the response that I would expect. You know, I'd expect him to be mad. I'd expect him to be like, you've got a lot of guts showing your face around here doing what you did. You know, but that's, that's not what the father did. And the son, you know, he, he tried reciting the thing to him that he planned on saying. You know, he said, he said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And he, he didn't even like finish everything he was trying to say. And the father said to the servants, he said, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. You know, basically like, like we're going to have a big feast and celebrate. For this son of mine, he was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and now he's found. So they, they started a party. They had a, they had a celebration. But the older son, you know how I said that this father had two sons, and it was the younger son who asked for his inheritance and then wasted it all? 
Well, while this party was going on, the, the older son, he was out in the fields working for his dad. And when he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He heard this party going on. And he called one of the servants and he said, he said, you know, what's going on here? And the servant said, your brother's returned. Your father's killed the fatted calf. And, and you know, we've, we were having this feast because your father has his son back, safe and sound. And the older brother was mad, super mad. And he, he didn't want to go to the party. And so his father went out to him and, and tried to, you know, reason with him, try to get him to come to the party. But the son said, look, he's like, all these years I've been slaving for you. I've been working for you. I've never disobeyed you. I've always done what you told me to do. And you never, you never had a party for me. You never even gave me like a goat to celebrate with my friends. But then this son of yours, which, you know, he doesn't even say my brother. He says, this son of yours who has wasted your property with, you know, doing stuff he should not be doing comes home. You, you kill the fatted calf for him. You throw a party for him. You have a feast for him. And the father said, my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But now we're celebrating and we're glad because this brother of yours, he was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And that's the end of the parable. And I, I love this parable. It is so, so good because, you know, this son who asked for his inheritance and then wasted it, you know, the son who did this bad thing, you know, we... We do bad things too. And you know, some of us do like what you might say is really bad stuff. And some of us only do, you know, kind of bad stuff. But the truth is it's all sin. And we all need to repent at some point or another for something or another. We're going to need to go back to God. You know, we all wander and we all need to come back. And that's what repentance is. And that's what this son did. You know, he made terrible, terrible choices but then he made a good choice. He made a choice to go back to his father. But even in this, he didn't quite get it right. He and his older brother, they made the same mistake. They both thought that this prodigal son was worthless, no longer worthy to be called the son of his father. They both judged the prodigal son. You know, for the older son, he's thinking like, I hope I never see that younger brother of mine again. What a worthless, wasteful little brother. And the prodigal son, he's... He's thinking, you know, I'm dying out here. I've got to go back to my father, but there's no way that I could still, you know, be his son. So in order for it to be okay, I I'm going to have to tell him, you know, first apologize, but I'm also going to have to tell him, you know, don't even, don't even call me your son. I'm not worthy of being your son. Make me like, you know, one of your servants. And he's thinking, yeah, that's, that's what I need to do in order for this to be okay. You know, the older son's saying, there's no way that this can be okay. And the younger son is thinking, I think I've figured out how it can be okay. But they're both wrong. The only thing required for it to be okay is for him to go back to his father. You know, when his father sees him far off, he runs to him and he goes and he wraps his arms around him. He is so, so happy to see his son. And, you know, he doesn't even let him give, you know, his whole speech about how I should be a servant now and, and I don't deserve to be your son. His, his father's like, nah, forget that. We're getting your, your we're, we're going to put the robe on you and a ring on you. And we're putting the sandals on you. We're going to have a big celebration. You were dead and now you are alive again. You were lost and now you're found. There, there are so many people who, you know, they ruin their lives. They do what they should not do, and they, they need to repent, and they think to themselves, there's nothing. There's nothing I can do that can make this right. I can't repent. I can't go back to God. You know, some people think that they can, you know, make it up to him. You know, they'd say, well, okay, I can make it up to you by being your servant, or I can make it up to you by, you know, being a missionary, or I can make it up to you by being a pastor, or I can make it up to you by giving, you know, a whole bunch of money to the church. That, that None of that stuff can make your sin okay, right? None of that stuff can make up for what you've done. Like like the the prodigal son, you know, if he was his father's servant for the rest of his life, he might not have ever been able to, you know, repay what he owed his father, repay what he wasted. But repaying his father was not necessary. He didn't want repayment. He didn't want justice. He wanted his son. And that's the way God wants you. Sin, sin can ruin a lot of earthly stuff, but it cannot ruin your value to your Father God. If you are not living the way you ought to be living, if you're living in sin, if you've wandered away from God, you don't need some, you know, perfectly crafted speech for him to forgive you. You don't need to find some way to, to make it up to him because you, you can't. Just go to him. Be with him. Walk with him. Get back up and try again. You know, the Bible says that if you, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life, right? But even if you have eternal life, you can still wander. 
You can still have the need to, to come back to God. And in the end, he is our judge. He's your judge, and he's my judge, and he's their judge. I think that for some of us, we struggle with, with judging ourselves. You know, we say things like, I've done something unforgivable. And so I'm either going to, you know, just run from God completely or, you know, try to figure out something to make it so that I am worthy of God's love. I can be forgiven. And I think that others of us, we struggle with judging others. Really, I think we all do both. We judge ourselves for what we've done and we judge others for what they've done. But God is the judge, not you, not me, not them, God. You know, the younger son didn't take anything from the older son. It's not the older son that the younger son needed forgiveness from. And the older son was mad at the father for forgiving, for celebrating when his youngest son returned. That wasn't the oldest son's place to do that. It was the father who was wronged, and it was the father who was excited when his son returned. And when you sin, you sin against God. And it's God who is excited when you turn back to him. It's God who wants you back. It's God who loves you so, so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for your sins. The bad things that you have done should separate you from God forever. But God sent Jesus to pay the penalty for your sins so that if you believe in him, if you believe in Jesus Christ, your debt is paid. You will have eternal life. And if you mess up seven times or 70 times or 70 times seven times, if you mess up a million times, God is always waiting for you with open arms, waiting for you to come home. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would quit judging people. Quit judging other people and quit judging yourself. And if you've wandered from God, come back. Sin ruins things, but never let sin keep you from coming back to your Father God. Never let sin make you think that you are now worthless because your Father in heaven loves you and he has compassion for you and he's waiting for you to come home i hope you liked this video and yeah i i really really hope that if you are one of those people who who thinks that you blew it you you've sinned so much that god can never forgive you i i hope that you will realize that that's not true i hope that you'll realize that god is waiting for you with open arms and yeah you might not be able to make it right but he can and he has he just wants you. So if you're living in sin, stop. Come back to God. Get back up and try again. If it takes you 70 times, 7 times, if it takes you a million times, keep getting back up and keep coming back. He's waiting for you with open arms. 